This is It's Not in the Syllabus podcast, the how-tos of a student beyond classroom walls. This is the podcast where you, yes you, get to learn what they don't teach you at school and ace that test called life, or at least get a passing grade and get by. It's Not in the Syllabus is a podcast brought to you by the Adventist International Institute of Advanced Studies, together with the Student Association, where we feature stories by the students and for the students. Join us as we discover life lessons you surely need. Welcome back to our It's Not in the Syllabus podcast, Practical Lessons Beyond Classroom Walls. My name is Bruce Sumendap, and at this time, we are going to talk about a very important topic, which is building resilience. And this is the last part of our series about mental health, mental wellness. And at this time, I'm accompanied by a special guest. His name is Robin Ramroop. Welcome, Robin. Thank you so much. It's an honor to be here today. We're glad to have you here in this episode. So we are going to uh, talk about how to build uh, resilience in the context of bouncing back. But before that, I would like to introduce uh, to you our resource speaker today. Uh, Brother Robin is originally from Trinidad and Tobago. And he is here in the Philippines doing uh, various kinds of ministries. And he is trained as a theologian. And he has also finished his uh, medical degree. And I understand he's now working on some documentations uh, for his career. And so, uh, Brother Robin, um, again, thank you for being here as we talk about this important topic. Now, please help us understand about what resilience is to you. Can you help us define according to your own words? What's resilience? All right. For me, uh, resilience, uh, it's a very difficult word to, to kind of define in terms of our world now because everybody has a definition for it. And uh, for me, it's, it's not just a bouncing back. It's about moving forward. You know, some people think that, okay, if you're resilient, then if you go through some difficult moment or you encounter some problem, it means you can go back to the original position you was in. That's their definition. But mine is beyond that. It means you don't just come back to a position. It means that you move forward. So that's my uh, simple definition for resilience, is that you are able to come out of a situation and be progressive in life. So being able to uh, be a resilient person means taking a step forward from where uh, you're coming from. And I think that is very important. And, and here at IS, uh, our mission is to train leaders. And I think many of you agree uh, that one of the characteristics of a good leader is someone who is resilient, not only on a personal level, but on a team level. Now, going back to uh, the definition, um, so what, what do you think is the connection between having a characteristics of a re resilient person with uh, well-being? Okay, that's a very good question. Because... Uh uh, my wife studied uh, psychology, mm -hmm. and one day she came home with that T-shirt, and I was impressed what it said on it. It said, there is no health without mental health. <laughs> so I was like, wow, it had me thinking for a bit. And there is some truth to it, it seems. Because if your mental health is, uh, is having some challenges, then your whole being is upset, or you're depressed, or even you might become sad, or whatever it is. But I think that uh, when you think about being resilient, you have to have uh, some kind of capacity to decide that, hey, I must make a decision to move forward. So being resilient, it doesn't just start with, okay, um, you accumulate all your knowledge and you have, you have to have a willpower to make a decision to, to go forward. But aside from that, we can't just do it on our own. There must be a God factor involved. 
Because living in today's world, there's enough things every single day to give you enough stress to keep you burdened down. Whether it be finances, whether it be if you have children and they're giving trouble, whether it be at your workplace, whether it be uh, here at IS, I understand when I talk to certain students, the studying is so challenging for them that they walk around like if they're baptized in lemon juice. They're <laughs> sad, they're down, they're depressed. And, you know, we, we, I spend a lot of times uh, just encouraging few people here and there. So I think it really has to come to a point where we really do something about our mental health, our mental side of it. I'm glad that you pointed out that we really need to do something uh, in order to build ourselves to become a resilient, uh, a res resilient generation. Um, I'm interested to ask this from you. Do you think, uh, and I'm catching some answers from uh, your uh, words a while ago, uh, do you think that building resilience is something that can be learned, something that we can cultivate, or something that we are born with the ability? Mm. Is it natural or is it a combination of both? All right. Uh, before I answer your question, I, have, I want a, just a brief answer for me. <laughs> When you, uh, when you are born, do you think you are born with your fears in life? Mm -hmm. Fears, different fears, whether it's fear of heights, fear of a dog, fear of uh, thieves. To, to a certain degree, I think. Uh, you are born with it. Uh, when, when, uh, when we reach our childhood stages, to a certain degree. To a certain degree. But I want to disagree with you. Mm -hmm. Because I wouldn't know if I'm a little <laughs> baby that that dog is going to bite me. Right, right. Unless I have some kind of experience or somebody communicate that. So I would want to say there's a lot of uh, fears that are being communicated to our mm. people. Okay? It's being communicated. It's being learned. Right? Whether uh, even in college here, you hear, when, let's use college, uh, school setting. School setting. There are certain lecturers that has a history of failing people. <laughs> and when the new guys come in, they have not even failed yet, but they already have that kind of uh, anxiety. feeling and anxiety that maybe I might fail. It was communicated. But what I want to suggest, the same thing with resilience. Mm -hmm. We need to communicate resilience mm -hmm. and we need mm -hmm. to live resilience in our own lives, especially our leaders. A lot of our leaders are not communicating and are not living resilience. Why? Because we have accumulated so many fears in our lives. The reason why I'm telling you this is because when I read the Bible, it says, perfect love casts out some fear. Mm -hmm. Does it say some or all? Some fears or all fears? Perfect love casts out all fears, all fears, not some. Then it says, the Lord has not given us a spirit of fear. Mm -hmm. So who is giving us this spirit? You know, but he has given us a spirit of love, of power and of a sound mind. So I'm thinking one of the things that are really holding us back from becoming resilient is different fears, whether we accumulate them or we, we learn them along the way, whether it's communicated to us. That's a lot of that has a lot to do with us uh, not being resilient in this time. Uh, well, thank you. I like that you pointed out that uh, being resilient is something that is also God-given. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, we can develop the ability to be resilient. Mm -hmm. And uh, now, to, as a follow-up to, to, to the previous question, is uh, that is there a... Is there a negative side of resilient? What mm. I mean to say, if we focus too much on resilient, will it always be positive entirely? Or is there a, a, a downside? Oh, that's a very good question. Uh, some people think resilient is only working hard. Yes, yes. You know, right. but that's not it. Mm -hmm. Re to be resilient, you really have to have a good balance in life, you know? 
you have to adjust your time differently. If you have children, you make time for your children, you make time for your wife, you make time for your studies, you make time for your work and things like that. You can't just say, okay, I'm going to neglect my kids for a bit, maybe th three, four months, and then I will uh, think about them later. I need to get this done. I know in times you have to make sacrifice. That's different from what I'm talking about. Some people make hard work their whole life mm -hmm. and they don't take some time to enjoy life. Like, for example, I have many of my colleagues in med school. They live one year at a time, meaning they want to pass the year. Mm -hmm. And during that year, they spend no time socializing, no time enjoying, no time playing some sports. And the year has passed. And yes, they might pass the year. But I've noticed after the four years have done and they collect that diploma, the joy is gone. After a few days, it's gone. What's next? And four years have been wasted, I would say. Just studying, 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 and you have not lived your life. Resilience is more than just hard work. Some mm -hmm. people think it's just hard work. I need to work hard. I need to work hard. It's way more than that. Are you understanding what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So in, 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 in for me, in my med school days, I didn't get the best grades, but I passed my years, thank God. But I also enjoyed it. I spent time with people. I spent time playing. I spent time having a good time with my family. You know, it was challenging. But in life, you would be amazed to see how you can manage this time and make it something beautiful. You have been giving us hints of some challenges that you face during your uh, your uh, medical uh, education, uh, your schooling. Mm. Uh, can you share with us some of the challenges that you have faced and how has resilience become a powerful tool that mm. enables you to bounce back one step ahead of where you've, mm. you, you've been before? Okay, I will share uh, first in med school. Sure. Med school, they give us exams every week. Mm. And uh, the passing is 37 out of 50. Everybody in the class wants you wants to get at least 37. Mm. It's different from when you're growing up, your parents tell you, if you study hard, you are bound to get good grades. <laughs> it's different in medicine. I, medicine. I have noticed that my own self. If you study hard, you don't necessarily pass. The first exam, I failed it. Mm. I got, I think, 35 somewhere around there. The second exam, I decided to study more. And then I failed it. I got 33. Now, I, I was supposed that weekend, I was supposed to have some time with my wife and stuff. We were supposed to go out. I come and I told her, I said, babe, listen, I need to study some more. And I really need to put in the, ex the, the, the work because if I don't pass, I cannot pass the year. Mm -hmm. So I feel too already. I need, the, I need to oh, pass man. the third one. The third exam, you know, and when you talk to Papa God and you ask him to do something with your <laughs> coconut here, you know, make sure things <laughs> working here. You ask him and you think that, okay, God is going to answer you, you know. And you go in with the exam with confidence. The third exam I took, I failed it. I got 29. Now, that does something to you. Now, we're talking about resilience. Sometimes, you know, the first time things happen, it's okay. You can, you know, the second time is okay. But when the third times happen, oh, what's wrong here now? You know, it, it, it does something to you. Mm. But I said, you know what? I said, I got my grades. I said, you know what, I'm going to continue studying. That's all right. I went to the library. I know I'm sitting just like how me and you're sitting here. I'm mm -hmm. sitting studying with my books. And this young lady came to me with tears in her eyes. And she said, Rob, I failed the exam again. I looked at her and I said, me too. Her eyes opened wide like this. She's like, you, you Ramrup, you fail. I can't believe it. How can you fail and be so happy and so chilled here? I said, yeah, this is the fourth time I'm failing. This is the third time I'm failing, sorry. She, she didn't believe me. I took out my notes, mm -hmm. my exam. I had all the papers and I put it on the paper, the table. She checked it and she saw that all my grades were even, were failed and they were even lower, lower than, than the grades first. that she got. Wow. She looked at me and she said, Rob, I want to have what you have. If you can fail three times, and still be happy and still be positive that's something i want to have teach me how to have that kind of things mm. this was my moment to minister to this young lady we had a prayer we sit down we studied after 
the next exams i scored almost uh, i think 46 47 <laughs> which made up for these things god has a plan even in our struggles mm. even in our struggles he has a plan and this is why resilience is so important because it's your testimony i'm glad to hear that uh, your uh, bouncing back experience beca- became an opportunity to uh, to witness to others mm. and uh, the story of you facing challenges uh, makes me wonder uh, does resilience become something that you develop only when you face challenges how can we speak to people who probably don't have that uh, extraordinary uh, crisis or challenges um, in other words is it possible for people to develop resilience before coming in to such a, um, a difficult situation or should we go through difficult times in order to you know to build that uh, ability you know this this question you're asking me here you're challenging me right now <laughs> <laughs> but i want to say that nobody have a life without challenges mm-hmm. even the rich people have challenges even the poor the middle class the educated the uneducated they all have their challenges in our situation i would suggest that from the time you wake up in the morning you have to start mm-hmm. developing your resi- Resi- resilience. resilience because it's just like if you're going to run a marathon okay if you're going to run a marathon you don't wake up on the morning of the marathon and stretch and say i'm ready you prepare for this thing you start taking okay maybe i'll start walking today mm-hmm. to 2 3 kilometers and then i start running and see how it goes you train your body for it and the same thing we we are christians and we know how the end times is going to look like right things are going to get bad in the end times that's why we are expected to develop our resilience now so that when the last days comes we can stand firm that's what i'm telling you when you wake up in the morning and your alarm clock seems to not to work properly and you're running late do not be upset if your children is not uh, acting the, the way this is your chance to calm yourself and work it out if the the jeepney driver is uh, broke down with your jeepney and you making you late for class calm yourself and work it out if something if somebody uh, called you to do something that you shouldn't be doing or it's not in your uh, it's not your fault or uh, they're blaming you for something calm yourself and work it out this is how you will develop so when the real big problems come and i have a big big problem i want to share with you if we have time when the real big problem comes you can handle it like a pro because you know you made that connection with papa god mm-hmm. in the morning you ask the holy spirit to give you power isn't it the holy spirit is known to give us power sometimes we want to go into this resilient thing on our own it can't work like that we need power we need power how will you have power if you if you go in now and and something happen let's say somebody bump into your car and now they're telling you you wrong and you have to pay and then when they go to the police the police is telling you you You're have wrong. to pay how do you deal with it and you have no money it's challenging right you it, it affects your emotion but i'm suggesting to you papa god knows the situation is going to happen to you and he said in his word i will provide a way out he is faithful not you so that's how i am thinking it should be we should start in baby steps every morning you wake up don't wait for wait for some huge problems to come because from the time you wake up there might be a problem or oh, the first problem is oh, i want to sleep some more don't sleep some more guys get up and get the work done <laughs> there are two points that i want to highlight here uh you have mentioned that uh, um, nobody's life is perfect mm. every one of us face certain uh, degree of challenges challenges in various degrees and probably crisis some realize it others maybe mm. they don't realize it and the second point uh, you pointed out something which i think is very compelling in uh, building resilience uh, we need to realize that there's a higher power mm-hmm. and with god's help 
we can be able to to develop that resilience uh, that can be beneficial for us. Uh, Robin, you said you wanted to share something. Uh, I have one more story I would like ahead, to share please. on resilience and how God has brought me to this time. You see, I just recently took the second step for the board exam in the UK. And a couple of weeks ago, about two weeks ago, I got the results. Mm. And I failed the exam. Oh. I needed 10 stations. I got nine stations. Got nine. Now, when I got the results, you know, in the first uh, moments, I was a little bit sad. It's normal, I think. But thank God, I was able to process this thing within minutes and look back to see past. I took three months. I left my family. I went to I went to the US and then to the UK. I tried to raise the funds. So it's an expensive exam. The exam alone is about 70,000 pesos. So it's not cheap exam. And I have made we made the sacrifices and now I didn't pass this exam. But when I look back, the past three months, God has sent me around the world to do mission work. Now, I went to the US, I preached there. I had the opportunity to go to Alaska. I preached there and then there is one, one young lady who didn't come to church for one whole year. That Sabbath she was in church. And afterwards she came up to me and she said, you know what? God sent you here for me because I was a stagnant Christian and I need to get back to going to church, to doing things. Mm -hmm. I went to London. I preached, I stayed one month there. I preached five times in London. Now, I thought I went for studying, but it <laughs> seems I went to do this thing here. <laughs> now, in many of the churches, people came and they say how God has used me and things. But one lady in particular, she's 80 years old. She came to me and she said, Son, God sent you today for me. Today you have brought hope in my life. And she shared a bit of her story and she said, I'm so thankful that I have hope again. Now, when I look back at these things, should I be down that I failed an exam? Or should I reflect on how good God has been? Because you know what? When I was in the U.S., I was doing some uh, work in uh, a school there, just helping out here and there. And there's this, this gentleman who came and he saw me from, the, I don't know the guy, he saw me from time to time, we greeted each other. And then just before leaving, he said, I want to take you guys for dinner, you and your brother. I said, okay, no problem. We go three days, I think, before I leave. He took us for dinner. And whilst we're eating, he took out, he dipped in his pocket and he took out a thick stack of money. Oh, wow. And he gave it to me. Now I looked at the money on the outside, there's a hundred dollar bill. I said, he said to me, Jesus told me to give this to you. I said, uh, amigo, this money you're giving me here, it's a lot of money, man. Look how thick this thing is. He said, no, only the outside there's a hundred dollar bill. And then the inside, there's only singles. So I said, he said, that's what making it look thick. You know, when you get this kind of money, you're a little bit uh, nervous now. You want to go home and count this thing, you know, especially when you need money. So I go home and uh, I try to be as uh, discreet as I can. I, I go in a corner there and I'm counting this money. The gentleman, the gentleman gave me 2,000 US dollars. Wow. Amen. Now, when I look back now and I say, Lord, you give me enough money for the, the last exam I failed and I have enough money for the next exam that I'm going to take in October. Long story short, God using this failure to bless other people. I made a post on Facebook about this thing. A young lady reach out to me. She said, Rob, I have failed an exam since two months ago and I cannot recover. But after seeing your post, I got some perspective in life and I'm moving forward. So your story of resilience and my story of resilience is not just for our own self. It's to motivate somebody along the way, to give somebody some hope, some strength, so that when the time comes, you can lift somebody over the speed bump. Amen. Thank you so much, uh, Rob. I think um, every one of us have different stories of resilience 
and I'm sure we have different opportunities. And in the case of Robin, um, that's an opportunity where uh, you can be a blessing to others. Mm -hmm. And in turn, you can bless others by your ministry. And uh, I'm glad that we are able to, 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 to discover this uh, wonderful testimony from Robin. And I hope we, we are able to um, gain some insights that no matter what challenges that we face, um, what difficulties, what adversity that we are facing, what stress are we facing, uh, we know that uh, with God's help, mm -hmm. we can turn obstacles into op opportunities. So, um, Robin, thank you so much for your testimony and thank you for your time here with us. Remember, we must be resilient. It's contagious. Just like John the Baptist, he lost his head, but he was resilient. Just like Daniel in the lion's dead, he was there, but he was res resilient. Just like the little girl who helped uh, uh, the leper Naaman, she was resilient. Just like Samson who lost his eyes, he was resilient. Just like the three Hebrew boys in the fire, they were resilient. And just like Jesus Christ hanging on the cross, he was the most resilient. He never gave up because he thought about you and me. Let's continue to be resilient and let our resilience be contagious. God bless you guys. I hope you can join us again next time in our next episode on It's Not in the Syllabus, Practical Lessons Beyond Classroom Walls. Mm. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.